morning and welcome to Hope Lutheran Church in Chino Valley, Arizona. We're glad you joined with us today uh, through our live uh, Zoom or also here in, in, your, in the house of God. We're glad you're here too today, guests and members. Glad that you are spending your time in God's word and with me this morning as we uh, continue our Easter celebration looking at why we have certain hope in these uncertain times. Today we will be considering some words from St. John, his first epistle, as we look at Jesus, the light of the world, whom we follow and through whom we are not in darkness any longer. God bless your worship. And as always, if you have any comments, please send them to me by our website and my email address that you find there. God bless your worship today. We begin with our very first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
Father has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now in the peace of the forgiveness we have through Jesus Christ, let's join to praise the Lord. God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal lives and eternal joy, even in uncertain times. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our God speaks to us this morning through the words of his apostle Peter in Acts chapter 4. After Peter and John healed a lame man in the name of Jesus, listen to the message of that name. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we are being questioned today for an act of kindness that was done for the lame man as to how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that it was by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him this man stands before you healed. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. This is God's word. 
Please join with me now in singing the psalm for today, which is Psalm 118. the children to come up for the children's message, please. Morning, children. Good morning. Oh, wow. You guys forgot how to do that, too. A year away from this, kind of Okay, let's try again. Of course, we were a lot shorter last year. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> that still was pretty weak, but okay. <laughs> it's good to see you all. I, and, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you a question about names. If you, you know, if you hear a name, what are you hearing? You know what I mean? If somebody says a name, you put a lot of memories to that name, don't you? For instance, if I say grandma, you have a lot of things to think about, right? Because you know your grandma. Is that right or not? Yeah, I know you're looking over there now over here. Okay? And, and you know, I think of my grandma, you, grandma, oh, I have two of them, of course. Do you have two grandmas? Half, yeah. Yeah. And, and when you think about your grandmas, you think about, wow, one of my grandmas was an excellent baker. I mean, you just smelt her kitchen when you walked into the house, and you added 20 pounds. I mean, that's how good she was. But there are other names, when we hear them, it comes out completely opposite. Maybe a name that evokes feelings of, like, terror and 
anger. You know what I mean? I, I think like Adolf Hitler. You know what I mean? You still study history? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, Adolf Hitler was, he was a mass murderer, wasn't he? And he did a lot of things to hurt a lot of people that we're still feeling, I believe, still today in this country and around the world. It's not a good thing. So there is something to somebody's name, right? A person's name is his or her reputation. And today, we just heard this in the first lesson, that there's a name that's above every name. When you hear this name, and you believe in what that name is, and who that was all about, Jesus Christ, uh, that brings into our mind and our hearts all the wonderful things our Savior has done for us. The name of Jesus Christ. That's the name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. We're going to do it today. We're going to bow the knees of our hearts, maybe not physically on our knees, but we're going to submit to God and to his word, aren't we? And throughout eternity, we're going to praise our God and hold up that name of Jesus, because in Jesus and by his reputation, we are forgiven. We're going to hear more of that in the sermon this morning. Jesus is our light. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, continue to make the name of Jesus shine in our world and in our hearts through your word so that we may always have the certain hope of eternal life, even in times when we just don't always know what's happening. Lord, we place our lives into your hands for Jesus' sake. In his name, amen. Thanks, children. Go back. Alleluia, alleluia. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Alleluia. today is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 4, beginning with verse 36, where the risen Christ appears to his disciples on Easter evening. They saw, they observed, they heard, and they touched the risen Savior, proof positive that he lives. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened and thought they were looking at a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself, touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still did not believe it because of their joy. And while they were still wondering, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and some, some honeycomb. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, and so it must be. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Holy Gospel. Please join with me now as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in 
one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the next song. Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and rules eternally. Amen. Do you know what it's like to walk around in darkness? Now, I, I, I don't think we think of that too often, but you know, when you're out and it's a new moon, so it's dark, no moon in the sky, it's pretty dark outside, isn't it? But it's not completely dark. There's still stars up there shining, right? So much so that you know, you can actually navigate and find your way around by following the stars. True? But what's it like to walk around in complete, utter darkness? It's 
far as I know, there's only one place on earth that you can experience that, and that's down in a hole in the ground called a cave. And if you've ever been in a cave and they turn the lights out, it's a weird feeling to be in that complete darkness, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about? Have you been in there? I mean, you can almost feel the darkness. It's really eerie. And if the lights aren't turned back on, how are you going to find your way out? There's no navigational stars. Complete darkness. You're lost. That's the picture that our God gives to us in his word when he talks about the darkness that you and I have been born into, the darkness of unbelief. It's so dark that you can feel it. The darkness of unbelief. We could not see God. We could not see God's will. We could not see Jesus, who is the light of the world and the word of life, because we were in the dark. Spiritual death, spiritual darkness that kept us from finding our way around, much less our way out of our problems of sin, guilt, and death. That's why we need Jesus. And if you think of the world in which we live today, these are really uncertain times. Now, maybe you have a certainty that you're going to graduate in a couple of weeks, some of you from college, some of you from high school, and some of you from elementary school. But that graduation is still uncertain to give you what you really need. And what is it that you need? What is it that I need? What is it that all people need? We need to see Jesus. It's pretty simple, isn't it? We need to see Jesus, who is the light that always shines. The text for our meditation today, our, our message, comes to us from the first epistle of John. This is the epistle reading for this third Sunday of Easter. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have observed with our hands, which we have touched regarding the word of life, the life appeared, and we have seen it. We testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. He's talking about Jesus, isn't he? We are proclaiming that what we have seen and heard also to you so that you may have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Write these things to, I write these things to you that our joy may be complete. This is the message we heard from him and proclaimed to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. <clears throat> if we say we have fellowship with him but still walk in darkness, we are lying. And do not put the truth into practice. But if we walk in the light just as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I write these things to you so that you will not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. This is God's Word. Jesus, the light, always shines. So we could ask the question, well, what have we seen? Because Jesus shines, our eyes work. Because Jesus shines in our hearts, the eyes of our faith can see. And what do we see? Simply, we see Jesus, don't we? And that's exactly what the apostle is saying when he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have observed, and what our hands have touched regarding the word of life. That's kind of an interesting picture, isn't it? The life appeared. Jesus, and we have seen it. We testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. 
Now, we know from the scriptures that Jesus is the living word, don't we? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, Jesus Christ. But Jesus is also the light of the world. We learn that from the same apostle. In John 1, the true light that gives life to every man was coming in the world. He was in the world. He also adds, actually before that last reading, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning, Jesus Christ, the light and the Word of light. That's kind of powerful, isn't it, for us? At least I hope it is. It's that Son of God who came in the flesh and appeared to people that enabled people like John to say, we saw him, we heard him, we observed all the things he did, and we even touched him. He's real. He's not the phantom of somebody's imagination. He's real. We were there. We saw it. We told that. And John wasn't the only one. St. Peter says the same thing. We did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory. Old Testament, we call that the glory of the Lord. Kabod Adonai. Saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. These apostles recorded by God's grace what they heard, what they saw, what they observed, and what they touched. And you know why? Because that's the light that shines to bring people out of the darkness. The darkness of unbelief. The spiritual death that we're born into. And so we see Jesus. We see Jesus' atoning work for us and the world. Now, I want you to remember something, because believers sometimes get high-handed, you know, they get big heads, and they're filled with pride and arrogance. Look at what I am. Look at what I have done. But I want you all to take a step back from your lives just a second, and take a look at the way you were when you came into this world. You know, none of us was born into the family of God the first time we were born. We were born following the human nature, the thing passed down by our parents. We were born into darkness. We could not see. We were not believers. Now, for some of you, you may remember the time when you could not see Christ. I don't have that personally because I've been a child of God since I was a little infant, for sure. Baptized. I don't remember the time when I walked in the darkness of unbelief. Some of you do. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you remember it or not, the fact is that we all have. And so we need to see Jesus' atoning work, because without that work, we'd still be in the dark. St. John said, my children, I write these things to you so that you will not sin. Why do you hear sermons? Why do you study the word? So that you live for Christ. The problem is we still remain sinners, even though we're walking the light of Christ. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the whole world. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know? You and I have an advocate. Some of you speaks in our defense. Now, a dead Jesus isn't able to speak in our defense, but Jesus lives. And he stands right in the throne room of his Father, and he says, when we fall into sin, Father, you punished me already. Father, you promised that through my completed work, they're forgiven. He is an advocate that says, listen, Father, look at my life, not theirs. Because my righteousness is clothing them. And my blood has washed their sin and guilt away. And I did what you wanted me to do for them. Father, forgive them. That's what our heavenly high priest does as our advocate before God. 
And I don't know about you, but there's nothing that brings me greater joy of knowing that God is not going to kick me into hell forever. No matter how bad things are in this life, how uncertain our times are, that's my hope, and that's your hope too, isn't it? And this isn't just some academic exercise. It's not just so we get a paycheck. It's because it's God's truth. Jesus is the light that always shines. And through his shining, we see him, our advocate. And not only that, he's the atoning sacrifice. The thing that we needed to be at one with God, in fellowship with God. That's why John talks about fellowship and atonement in the same section here. Is because the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from every sin. He is the one who offered up the one thing that God demanded that we could not give. He brought us out of that deep, dark, black cave of unbelief and brought us into the family of his son whom he loves. And through faith, we have everything that God says. Religion, ah, throw religion out. Christianity, being children of God. John says, my children, that's what's important in life. Because everything else will pass away, but that won't. That can't. And it's because we know these things that we testify. The light always shines so that we can testify to the truth. Now, who is it that we testify about? About whom do we testify? Well, we testify Jesus. And you all know that witnesses tell a message, right? They tell what they have seen, what they have heard, what they have observed, what they have touched. Correct? That's what witnesses do. John and his brother disciples did that very thing with the power of Pentecost. And so he said, this is the message we heard from him and proclaimed to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. They testified to what they saw. Interesting. They saw Jesus baptized, some of them. They saw Jesus as he did his miracles. They saw Jesus and observed and listened as he taught those multitudes on the mount, the Sermon on the Mount. They observed Jesus' transfiguration. They watched as he was condemned. They knew he died. They saw him alive. And they bore witness to that so that you and I could have fellowship with God. They had it. See, the goal of preaching and witnessing to Jesus is that we all have fellowship. John said, if we say we have fellowship with him but still walk in the darkness, we are lying and do not put the truth into practice. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This whole idea of fellowship, the, the Greek word you might know is koinonia, is making everything common. We all have and share in the same thing. Another word for fellowship is participation. We all participated in the death of Christ, and now through baptism we participate in the life, the resurrection of Christ, right? Paul writes that. And the third word that is used to translate this word in the Greek is communion, union with. If the word of God is not proclaimed, people <coughs> cannot be in union with each other in Christ. It's as simple as that. And so we preach the gospel so that people can come into the fellowship of God's family and be one with, in the body of Christ, with Christ our head. That's the goal of preaching the gospel, that people hear and be saved. When they hear and believe, they're in the fellowship of believers. And we confess that together because we can't see the hearts. I can't look into you and say you're a believer or not. You can't look into my heart. And so it's based on confession in the visible world, the visible church. God knows those who are his in the invisible church. But we make confession like we just did with the Nicene Creed. And perhaps the biggest way we confess the fellowship we have is as we stand before the altar of our Savior and receive his body and blood in the sacrament. We are proclaiming by doing this what we have seen and heard, our confession.
confession of faith, what we have seen and heard by faith, communion, what we have seen and heard by faith, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. The result of all this is that we walk in the light. Jesus is the light of the world. He will always shine whether people choose to be underground in the cave of unbelief. But Jesus will shine, and he does it so that we might rejoice. I find it hard to believe that believers sometimes uh, become sad without hope sad. I sometimes find it hard to believe that we lose the joy of our salvation even though God may have taken away a blessing or two or three. In tough times, we can get very down in the mouth sometimes, right, about what's going on around us. You ever have that kind of feeling? Like, it's not the world I grew up in. You kind of gnash your teeth. But remember the goal of hearing Jesus and seeing him as the light of the world and actually bearing witness to him is so that our joy might be complete. That's what John says. We write these things to you so that our joy may be complete. Nothing brings me much more joy than knowing that you confess Jesus as your Savior, lived for him, and can't wait to get to heaven. Nothing brings me more joy to see you sitting here this morning or watching, and, and I know that you're hearing the word of truth, the testimony of Jesus from those apostles through the word and then out of my mouth to you. And you also should be joining me in this joy because we have participated in the forgiveness of sins. That means there's no sin out there too great that God hasn't already forgiven in Jesus. That means there's nothing you can do that's so bad that Jesus hasn't already forgiven that sin. You are the children of God. Rejoice in what that means. And live that joy as you live your life one to the other. Because Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose, and Jesus is coming again. Our great hope in uncertain times. He is always going to be our advocate. And that brings us joy, too, knowing we don't have to stand before the almighty judge alone. We have an advocate with us. Pretty powerful one, right? And finally, the joy of eternal life. Eternal joy because Jesus lived. It's not going to end. What takes away from our joy? There's a lot of things, I suspect. It's a lot of times our, our, our minds lead us away from the light of Christ. And we don't rejoice because we get so enveloped in the world's troubles that we forget Christ has overcome the world. Sometimes we lose our joy because we recognize that one sin that we continue to fall into again and again and again, whether that's the sin of some sexual thing, or, or maybe it's money, or maybe it's you can't keep a relationship going because you just don't know how to be a, a, a servant to someone else. Maybe it, it comes up because of who knows what, you know? Maybe that sin is, is alcoholism or drug abuse or any other kind of abuse. Christians have all these same problems because they still carry the sinful nature and the devil wants us to fall headlong back into that dark place of unbelief. And those things we should not rejoice in. But we take them to our God and confess. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. You just heard that. Our eternal joy is knowing that God forgives sinners. That Christ, the light of the world, because he lives, will always shine through his gospel. The record of what was seen and heard and observed and touched. And we will walk in the light of Christ all the way to eternal life where we will be in the light of Christ forever without a need of sun, moon, or stars. God grants you that faith. God grants you that light through the word of life. Please join with me in pray, prayer. Heavenly Father, in a world that is all messed up in their unbelief because they cannot see Jesus, give us the strength to be your witnesses wherever you put us whether that's in a university, 
in a high school, in an elementary school, whether that is in some place of employment, whether that is in our neighborhoods or in our families or wherever it might be. Lord, let your light shine off of us as we live in the forgiving love of our Savior, but also share that and bear witness to it because Jesus the light shines and he's the only certain hope in these times. In Jesus' name, amen. Now please <coughs> respond with me to the word of truth as we sing Create in Me. Please arise and join with me in prayer. <clears throat> o blessed Savior and Redeemer of the world, we often long to have you with us here on the earth, even as the disciples had you. But help us firmly to believe that it is to our advantage that you went to your Father, for in going away the Church has been immeasurably blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, how true it is that natural humans do not receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to them, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we may better understand your word even as your own disciples couldn't always understand some of your truths without having them made clear, so we cannot always understand your word without being enlightened by your Holy Spirit. Lead us through prayer in your name and through regular and devout study of your word to an ever greater spiritual light and faith that we might bear witness and testify to Jesus the light that always shines. When we are in agony of soul on account of our sins, Teach us that the way of repentance leads to forgiveness and joy. When we are in pain of body and anguish of mind, show us that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. When the heartaches and disappointments of this life attempt to crush us, open our eyes to your divine presence. Even though you have withdrawn your visible presence, we know that according to your promises, you are with us to the very end of the age. And so, Lord, uphold us with your invisible presence unto the hour when you will come in all your glory and light.
take us from this earth of darkness and uncertainty to the heavenly joys of heaven above. Lord, we also bring to you today our prayers. First, our prayers in behalf of the family of Dennis Starr. He is the half-brother of George Starr, whom the Lord called home to heaven yesterday. The Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you bless this believer, Dennis, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought him to the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort his family and all who mourn his death with your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest. And at last, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us to number our days aright so that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. We also bring our prayers of thanksgiving on behalf of Quinn Michelle Norland, who happens to be the great-granddaughter, just born, of Otto and Judy. Lord of life, we marvel again at the wonderful way in which you bring children into the world. Accept our thanks for holding your protecting hand over the mother in childbirth and for bringing joy to the parents with the gift of a child. Bless this child. Receive her into your family through the sacrament of baptism. Protect her from every danger of body and soul. Give her parents, grandparents, and even great-parents, great-grandparents, the love, wisdom, and means to care for this child that you entrusted to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the friend of children. Lord, hear us as we now bring to you our private petitions and prayers. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now receive with believing hearts the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine unto you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated now as we close this portion of our worship with a song by Martin Luther College, uh, The Day of Resurrection.